So hello guys and happy Monday. In today's video I'm going to show you how to get data from the OECD API. The OECD is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and it, it has tons and tons of financial economical data sets for the entire world. Very, very good. I'm going to show you how to access their API using Power BI. You can do obviously this also in Excel using Power Query. And uh, the data that you can get is, for example, here, unemployment rate for up to, I think this is October, November 2020. Very, very useful economical financial data. So it's not very straightforward, but I'll show you how to do it. Let's get started. Okay, guys, so I have a previous series of videos where I show you how to get data from Eurostat. Now I'm going to show you how to get data from the OECD API. Here's the thing, it's not very straightforward. But we're going to need a function that Imke created for us. But it works very beautifully with the function. It works for all kinds of queries. I've tested it. And I've talked to the OECD developers and they told me that they're coming up with a new API that is going to allow us to get data easier. For example, not only in JSON form, but CSV, the same as the Eurostat. So you can just right click it, you know, get the data in a table format already. So until that happens, which is going to take some time, this is the way to do it, okay? So let's get started. We're going to get this data. And I was looking for if somebody had already done this and I found luckily Imke that she had actually created a function to get any data from OECD. So what you need to do is to copy these and go to Power BI. Then you go to get data blank query. I'm going to show you all the steps in case you're new to Power BI or Excel so you can actually get this thing done. You're going to go to the advanced editor. You're going to paste this. And this is a function that has all the steps needed to unflatten that JSON file that you get from the API. So here we're going to get function get OECD data. Okay. Now, what do you do with this? As you can see here, it's asking you for a URL, and this is the URL that you'll get from the API. So if we go back, let's go here. It says unemployment, and then the same way as for Eurostat, it has here a link to the um, data source. So it will take you here to like a presentation of the data source, and then here is a link of the data. Now, I want the exact same data that is in here. And what you are going to get from that link to begin with is this unemployment rate. You can actually click on here and change the unemployment. This is employment. And I wanted to have monthly, but I was not able to get the data. Okay, guys, so what I found is that this is the only place where I can actually get the data that I want is stats.oecd.org. And if you search by unemployment, it will take you here to, you know, the data sources. And here you have monthly unemployment rate. This is the, exactly the one that we want. And here you go to export developer API. And you'll see. So here it says generate API query. It has to be a flat format, right? Copy that URL. And now we go back to Power BI. And we paste the URL in there. Invoke. And this is going to do, you know, in case magic and the do do We're going to get a table that's so cool. Unemployment. And then once you have this, then, then you can start, you know, grabbing the data. Here you have the rate. There's a lot of stuff here that you don't need. The location, maybe you need this for maps. This you don't need. This you don't need. The time period, we're actually going to have only monthly. Because here it has quarter and annual, we can we can aggregate that in Power BI. We don't need to have that spell it out for us. We don't need that. The country we need, we don't need that. We don't need that. Time, don't need that. Then we're going to do a date column because we're going to put a calendar. This is very relevant to have time intelligence calculations, right? So we're going to do date time period 01 we're going to convert it to date 
and the, this is number, this is all, everything text. Make sure that you always remember to put, to categorize the data field so this stuff, otherwise you get into trouble easily. Now we're going to have a calendar too. This is my calendar that I share with you all the time. Just going to copy the M query and you're going to get this file by the way. So don't worry. Calendar, calendar, close and apply. And let's make it load and you're going to get the information there. And obviously we're connected to the API, which basically means that every time you press refresh, you're going to get new data. Very, very relevant, very good. Once you know the guys develop a new API, I'll make a new video about it, but for now. So when it comes to calendars, remember you always have to mark as a data table the date column. We're going to go here, date column, okay. And then I have disabled the automatic relationships that get me into all kinds of trouble. So I'm going to do it manually, date with date. And now that we have that, I'm going to hide date from here. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to put country and date. And let the Power BI do its magic. No, I don't want it. And then I'm going to have amount as values. There you go. Looks a bit weird. Oh, I put it in the wrong way. Okay, there. Okay, now, now we're back on track. Okay, now what we're going to do is also activate the zoom slicer as well. Oh, so good. So good. And you see that we got have here only 2019, while in their website they actually had data from 2006. So how about we change the API slightly to get the data that we need. So if you go here and you look at the URL that is generated, you can see here this says start time and end time. So instead of 2016, I'm going to have 2006 on my calendar. And it's obviously needs to be the same range. So it's 2006. That's why we were only seeing 2006 data, because I was using the dates from the date calendar and didn't contain the entire time series. So always something. Okay, let's go back, let it load, and then we will get exactly the same visualization. And with this new zoom slicers, we can actually zoom in and out of the data in a very, very easy way. One thing that I wish for the love of me, and it hasn't been done yet, and it frustrates me every time, is that there's no conditional formatting for the line chart. I, especially when you have so much data, the only way to represent it is like this. You highlight, you highlight the countries that you want, like they've done here, and then the other ones get pushed to the background. Otherwise, Look at that. Who is going to see anything in here? Nobody. So I really, really hope that we will get conditional for formatting for line charts. I don't know what the difficulty is. Obviously, this got to be one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoy this video, you probably are going to enjoy also the Eurostat videos where I show you how to get data from there. And if your business is a gold mine, what you have in there, so make sure you check it out. Until then, I will see you then on Wednesday. Take care. Bye bye.